Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Beautiful sunny Monday. We had a gorgeous weekend. We did. I'm super excited, full of energy for this um, last week of, uh, I guess, February. What is this echo sound? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to try and correct <laughs> that right now. It's technology, as always, at its best. Okay, good. So now, go ahead. What's the topic of the day? Well, before we get in the topic, let's just talk about us. When we prepare for these videos, right? It's not just we don't come in and just wing it and, and yes. spit these out. Pretty a much all of, weekend long, I mastermind what I'm going to talk on Monday. Right, we spend a lot of energy trying to figure out yeah. what is a, is a good topic and what's an interesting topic. And um, we, we make a real effort to make, make sure we're engaging and that the content is valuable, right? Absolutely. It has to be something that right. everybody can take away something from. So today's content sometimes will feel like it's a repeat in some yes. respects, but it's not because it, it all represents <laughs> the best ingredients. So if you have your best recipe for a, a, a piece of food, let's say uh, <coughs> case, whatever it is, you copy that recipe over and over again. You don't change it. It's perfect. Exactly. So, so we're talking today about the right ingredients to get towards something. Right. Because when I kind of researched this topic or I, this topic came about Nothing last needed. week, because obviously I listen to many, many podcasts, read books, you know, all this, all this inspirational stuff that you kind of need, I think, in life. Um, it was kind of a, an open kind of a light bulb going um out or in, in my Wait, head. Well, the light, the light bulb goes off. It right? was like, wow, this makes so much sense, and we need to talk about this topic. So today's topic is gonna be, well, I call it the end game. You need to know your end game. Why Where you're going? are what are you, you yeah. here, and what's truly the end? What's gonna be the end result? Right. And I think. Uh, I, I hope, you know, the end of the conversation today, everybody's going to kind of feel like they understand what we're talking about because it's really hard to kind of put it into words. Um, and uh, Well, no, honestly, we, we, we've spent a few moments together saying, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, my God, we're so brilliant. And five minutes later, we say to ourselves, what did we say was brilliant? We've already forgotten so it. So the topic it, is really about... So it's really almost like about... it's touchable, but you lose it sometimes. So I, I want to kind of build up to the end game, but I just want to throw this kind of thought out and hopefully people kind of get into it. Uh, when a story comes about for a movie, uh, a writer, first they write the end of the story. And a successful movie and a, anything successful in life, a painter, um, a, a story writer they write the end where they are trying to go when you're going for a hike you know you have a map in front of you and you know where you're going and I think in life when you have a business especially I'm talking about entrepreneurs all these topics are all about entrepreneurs I'm not talking about somebody who has a 9 to 5 job and do what you know people tell them to do I'm talking about somebody who is creative who wants to do something different, who wants to do, some, do something successful in an entrepreneur right. mind. So but what we're saying is so you, 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 you have a kernel, know. an idea, and around that idea you need to build Exactly, your, your and career. I think that's the biggest problem that but I think business owners have. Uh, and anybody who comes to our kind of uh, you know, company and they, they, they're new to the business, they don't know what they are, what we do or what, 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 what they supposed to do, what's going to be the end. Oh, I just want to make money or I want to be successful. No, that's not enough. That's so not enough. You need to know exactly where you're going and what you're trying to achieve. And obviously you evolve over time, but uh, you need to understand that. So right. let's start the, okay. the different topics. <laughs> so, so to me, to build up to where the end game is, is if, uh, you need to have a certain personality attributes. And I right. think you need to have this kind of, graved into your mind, graved into you. Right. You need to be, uh, you need to have self-awareness. You need to know who you are, exactly right. who you are, your personality. So wait, 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 wait. We're, we are talking to realtors right now, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about the process of becoming successful. Exactly. Because there's a really black line between success and mediocrity. Yeah. And most agents fall on the mediocrity side. Mm. And what does mediocrity mean in real estate? It means you make the average salary for a realtor, which is thirty-five dollars or $40,000 a year. That's right. the average salary across the United States for someone who calls themselves a realtor. Right. 
Okay. And we're talking about how do you not fall in that category? And the answer is so simple in some respects. Mm -hmm. What was the, the joke we had last night, if you remember, if you don't, I'm sorry. No. About, you've forgotten? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that, um, well, I don't know exactly the wording, is that yeah. not to sell real estate. The easiest thing to do in real estate is not to sell ah, that, real that estate. Was it, yeah. <laughs> so that is the absolute yeah. easiest thing. If you yeah. want a really easy career in real estate and you want to be in the mediocrity side, don't sell real estate. Exactly. And that's an easy so, goal. But I'm not going to sell real estate. No, it's great. I'm not going to sell real estate today. Okay. So what does that translate to? <laughs> You're going to have an easy day. I'm going to have an extremely easy day. Yeah. And I won't make any money. Exactly. Right. So. So, okay, so going back to number one, you need to have self-awareness. You need to know exactly who you are, what your personality is, what your strengths are. And uh, I think, you know, by the time you start, you know, after college, you start some sort of career or maybe real estate is your, your first, which was mine. It, you know, it takes time for you to kind of understand who you exactly are. But obviously, at the beginning of your career, you, you uh, try out many things and right. that kind of molds you to your personality. But I think a successful business owner knows exactly what their strengths and right. what is their uh, personality type. They have to have a vision. Number two, you have to have a vision. You need to see the unseen and whatever your vision is, you need to own it. It, right. it, it has to be, uh, which it comes to the next topic, is that you need to be, uh, you need to own your vision, your right. own your strengths own your kind of goals. Right. right? Well, I mean, if the, the big picture in real estate, every realtor, there's always an exception, but for the most part, every successful realtor is a very unique personality for the most part. Right. Very driven. And you could put them all in the same room and they probably would all hate each other because they're all the same personality. Right. They are all super driven. They're not willing to hear what someone else has to say. They don't want to hear criticism. And you know what? They follow their own vision. Right. Most successful people, they are a strong person. I'm not saying you need to be arrogant. You, you, I'm not saying you need to be egoistic, but you do need to have a healthy dose of narcissism. You do Ooh, well, need I like to, that word. You do need to love yourself. And I, I, I tell it to everyone because in this business, you sell yourself. If you hate yourself, if you're not satisfied with yourself, you not owning yourself, wait, then I don't think how you're able to sell that. Because but this is really this different business, from being, that's what we sell. Right, but that's different from being insecure, right? Right. We all have the voices of, we, we talk about ad nauseum. Everybody has insecurity. No, I Absolutely. Suck, whatever, right? I have it all the time. Right. And I know when it comes to me, the feeling, first of all, by now, after 15 years in the business, and obviously, Practice takes, you know, uh, you know. Makes to, you perfect, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I know, I feel it, I sense it, and I, and I, I constantly say to myself, I don't want to go down to that spiral of, of you know, insecurity right, every, or every pessimistic. Two, every two years in this business, the two of us get smacked by a board in the head, and we say, oh my God, it's so obvious that we weren't doing X, Y, Z. Why weren't we doing it? And it just wasn't on our map yet. Right. So that goes back kind of where we're talking about, which is really strategizing the points on your map ahead of time, which we don't always do very well, but we do it. Right. But it's really knowing it. But let's go back to being a narcissist, right? Yeah. It's so, looking in the mirror, you have two choices. Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off, yeah. honey. The two choices are, oh my God, I hate myself, and that's how you start your day, or you start the day with, you know, I love myself. Exactly. I am who I am, this is how I look, and I'm gonna do the best with what I have, and I'm gonna go out to the world and be positive. Exactly. Which is gonna draw to people to you. Exactly, because if you are obviously pessimistic, pessimistic is being safe actually and being to putting on roadblocks. And I think optimistic people, overall, they open the, the their kind of way of life and they, um, well, obviously need to be flexible and go with the flow. But I think if you're optimistic, you do uh, uh, have no boundaries. And right. I think pessimistic people have so many roadblocks and so many fences they put around themselves that they're playing kind of the safe game and they wonder that nothing happens because if you're in the same same safe zone, right. I don't think anything could happen to you, right? Well, yeah. So I mean, you need to take risks. You need to It's to all be, about risk. If you, and, um, but that leads to our kind of, our map today. If you're asking your friends, hey, do you like this ad I'm creating? Hey, do you like this, uh, my pictures on Instagram? Hey, do you like the way I market my real estate? And right. I give you a negative answer. Oh, yeah. And then you change it because some, one person said no. Your mom said, I don't get what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You need a, that's back to narcissism. You need a strong enough internal voice that says, 
I don't really care what they say. I'm doing it my way. Exactly. So what comes to me is Gary Vee. I'm, I'm, I'm sure most of you know who Gary Vee is. If you don't, then man, you need to kind of do your homework and research. He is probably the most uh, talked about personality right now in social media, motivation and, and business strategy. You know what he's like? He's like drinking uh, apple cider vinegar for your health. It right. tastes horrible, but it's so good for you. The end of, so here is the deal with Gary Vee. Gary Vee, what we talked about so far, he has it all. He owns his personality. He owns, he knows his space. He's super confident at what he does. And uh, he's not afraid of any sort of criticism. And he has many criticism because he, he curses, you know, he calls people names. But at the end of the day, he really uh, talks his truth and at the end right. of the day he does say the truth right Agreed. and the truth most of the time especially in business it hurts and it feels bad and because you know um if you well, when people tell you you suck when one person <laughs> says they don't like you when you have a hundred people who say oh you're great and one person says well that sucks what do you look you always we always tend to gravitate towards the negative and we all need to be strong enough to say you know i don't really care about that one negative voice and you continue with your path mm. and that kind of takes us to this next kind of unless you have more you want to say no go more? ahead oh well i always kind of go back to steve jobs yeah because steve jobs was so driven in so many levels about what he wanted out of life and what absolute he wanted to achieve vision. that he, he had an absolute vision well he had a vision and it it, it evolved over time the vision changed mm. but the point for steve jobs is he influenced the world in so many ways and opened people's eyes in so many ways but he wanted it his way he re he would listen to people saying their opinion but he kept his path and that goes back to he had a vision down the road it wasn't a short-term vision it was a long-term vision about what he wanted right and that's what we're really talking about today you know what is our long-term vision as realtors where are we trying to get to at the end of the day I think every every successful p uh, person, uh, in, uh, especially in sales, in sales it's probably very easy to kind of figure out your vision. However, it's very hard to to kind of build the long term vision. Right, things get Real away. estate is very hyper local, and you kind of uh, stuck with the the area where you where you do business. Right, it's really hard to have, you need really hard to build success. I think if you constantly move around. Right. So that kind of determines, you know, that you are hyper local. If you start a business and you you gonna have success, you're most likely gonna stick around in the area. Right. right? So let's talk about so, kind of a, a, a made up fantasy a, a realtor might have. Mm. That fantasy might be they want to make enough money that they can go to the Caribbean and open up a bar on a beach, and that's their their end game. Okay. Right? The 20, if that's your years, end game, then well, I think example, every day right? you wake up and you visualize that you do right. research. First of all, everything we talked about, you know, in, in the beginning of this year is the research, is the three steps. Super important. Whatever your vision is going to be. Right. Um, and whatever your goal is going to be in life, um, you need to do research. You need to know exactly what it takes to get there. Right. You can't just say, hey, I want to own a 10,000 square foot mansion in Beverly Hills. Uh, you can say that, but then, you know. You but that, that's <laughs> nebulous, right? You need something concrete. You need right. a vision for what you want. So the idea whether it's you want to open this bar on a beach in the in the Caribbean or you want a mansion in Beverly Hills, you need more details, mm. right? And the other idea is this path you're taking to get to your final destination. Mm. There might be roadblocks, avalanches. That might be for sure. For sure, exactly right. You will be stopped along the way. Immigration is going to stop you. It's going to be the police. It's going to be an avalanche. It's going to be a catastrophe. It's going so to be a fire. So this comes back to super essential points, which is um, discipline and resilience okay. it's super so give me important examples of part of yeah resilience is that you cannot be afraid of failure failure doesn't mean that you stop what you're doing that's the failure failure right. means that you something what you started it's not working but then the uh, the solution for that is that you learn from it and uh, you evolve you evolve to uh, maybe a little bit different uh, direction but you not stop because if you stop, that's the absolute failure. Well, look, look, here's, here's an example in real estate. If for the last 20 years of your career, mm. you were following, for example, objection handling from um, one of the training org organizations, the right. objection scripts. Mm. You know what? People are pretty savvy now about real estate. When you show up to the door and you're doing your objection handling, 
that may not be the best way to continue your business. You need to evolve how you deal with clients. Oh, absolutely. Because clients are, with the internet, they're very sophisticated about real estate. So when you meet a client, you need to know ahead of time, they probably know a lot. Not as much as I do as a, as a professional, right. but you can't treat them like they're idiots and you can't try to sell to them because a lot of people won't respond to that. At least in, in our market here in the South Bay. There are other markets where it might still work, but not here, for sure. Right. But you need to own it. You need to practice it. So that comes back to discipline and right. practice. Every Olympic winner, as we know, right. practices hours and hours a day. You need to practice your own profession. You need to be trainable. If you're not trainable, forget it that you already failed because right. In life, you need to be, uh, you need to train yourself. You constantly need to educate yourself. Right. You need to uh, motivate yourself. You need to read books. You need to listen to different podcasts. You need to listen to motivational stuff. You need to, you need to learn, you know, the legal stuff. You need to constantly learn. And uh, you need to have the discipline to, to do this. Because I think if you don't have that, um, you're going to fail. And I, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Well, so the, you said a few things that are great. Well, you always say great things. Honey. Yeah, thank but you. But what I was, I was going to reinforce is everyone we know, at, on, not that we know personally, that we just know, mm -hmm. who are super successful, they all read books. They will tell you, if you ask them, key to your success, I read voraciously. I'm always reading a book. Constantly. You, you have to. Right. Because books is not just for, obviously, learning new stuff, but it also opens well, your mind. right? It percolates in your yeah, brain. Yeah, it opens your mind to different ideas, different uh, uh, kind of thoughts. And uh, for us, for me, it's motivation. And in this business, you have so much... Um, you know, disappointments and, and so many things not working out the way how you want it to work out. Would you say and on a weekly basis we have disappointment as yeah, a real estate company? Yeah, I, I nonstop have that. And I think uh, if I would not have, for instance, you, uh, who is my kind of support in every level of my life, or, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have the verbido that I know how I need to train myself and how I, Diana Roberts, right can get out of the 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 shit. <laughs> well, you know, when, I, when, going... I walk in, when I walk into the office and I see the steam coming out of your ears, right, and... I have two choices. <laughs> the choice is to engage you, which I never should do, but I always do, or leave and go somewhere else. But I always yes. engage you, and then it's always not good, and it's always because someone's treated us horribly yes. in a way that we can't imagine another human would treat another human. Correct. But our answer is always the same. It's always, fuck the fucking fuckers. Right? <laughs> It's like you move on. It's like, oh, well, okay, that person yeah. didn't treat you know, like, You really on. have to. And I think they are a minor roadblock that's blocking your course to where you're trying to yes. go. But I'm so focused on my end goal. And obviously, I have goals for the year. I have goals for five years. I have goals for 10 years. And I have goals how I'm going to retire. And now that I'm kind of approaching my midlife, uh, midlife. zone. Uh, so Diana hates saying the F uh, word. What is the F word, Diana? What? What is the F word? She says midlife. Oh, 40, yeah. Yeah. So Diana hit 40. And, oh, my God. Midlife crisis. No, but prices. it is definitely, you know, changes your thought right. process. And you look back and, okay, 20 years is gone. Well, 40 years is gone. But 20 was kind of, you know, trying it out. And then now 20 years of some sort of experience. And now you have another 20, 25, 30 years of, of hopefully active life. And then, you know, uh, you need to think about how right. you're going to kind of end it. Without going into so, detail, you had a goal for something for the business. Right that you were determined to make happen. I was determined. And, and I'm was, determined was, in many. <laughs> it was driving me crazy. I know. But she made it happen. So but I know that week, I can squeeze it out. For the yeah. business, and she squeezed it out. And it's a milestone that was super important for the growth of peer-to-peer -peer brokers. Because I had a vision. Growth, and I think, vision. absolutely, if you're super strong about it, and it's really kind of an exciting feeling when, when, when I talk about this even now, I'm super excited about um, you know, my, my personal visions and my, my I, I get excited because if you're not getting excited about your goal, I think forget it because right. you, you, you're not going to able to uh, accomplish it. And one more thought process before, are you going to do the show? I'm going to do the show. So one more kind of uh, two things which I want to kind of throw out. When you're a kid and your mom says to you and your grandmother says to you, you can do everything in this world, you know, and... You know, that's what I say to my kids too. Obviously, I'm, I'm being super nice and super, you know, so motivational politically and politically correct. But at the end of the day, it's absolutely bullshit. <laughs> because it's not 
true. When did we start you cursing cannot, so much? Today was the no, day we started cursing? No, you cannot do everything in the world. Right. Uh, you can do things that you can put your mind into, and you know that you have what we talked about, this, the self-awareness, the personality, the strengths, the knowledge, the discipline um, in you, then you can do it. But you can't just say, I can do whatever I want to do. No, you need to understand your limits. You need, everybody has limitations. Everybody has weakness. But you need to know how to kind of adjust and how who to hire, what kind of people you need right. to surround yourself with. So that's number one thought. And I think it's a really important thought because that's what you hear now. So right. especially in today's world when, you know, every kid has a trophy, every kid is, you know, super positive and everybody is an A plus student. We don't give grades. We just kind of talk right, about you good. Ba you're but, but back in real estate terms, right, we're talking right now about Everyone, you, you will never meet an agent who will tell you, a new agent. Mm. They get their license, it's anticlimactic because they studied, 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 got the license, they now have the license, and they want to make money. And what happens? Nothing. Nothing. For yeah. the most part. If you're lucky, you have a couple of quick I referrals. I have, you know, right now a few new agents, and they need to have a written, absolutely focused pass. A how business to plan get for there. the year. But if, if you're not having it, you're just kind of there. Right. And just kind of like floating in the world. Absolutely, you just kind of go with the flow. And you're not getting too much anywhere, pretty right, much. Right. Um, and the number, uh, the other two, uh, the other thought is, um, you know, we say to anybody, or you know, again, politically correct, that you shouldn't uh, judge a book by its cover. You judge every book That's by its cover. That's absolutely not true. And you absolutely should judge a book by its cover. In, it's in fact, you know, you know what? You know, here's proof, and it's back to Apple. Uh -huh. And I could get in trouble for saying this, but I don't think I will. Apple's top secret book, their top secret, secret book about future plans was called the Tax and Use Manual. So the cover was so boring, they decided the most boring cover for their top secret book of, of future plans, the Tax and Use Manual, no one would open it because that's proof that you judge that book by the cover. Yeah. Oh, that's the most boring book I've ever seen. Forget it. So if your cover mm. doesn't represent what you want people to see, boring or exciting, it's yeah. all the difference in the world. And in today's world, it's a, such a visual world. And I think uh, in sales, when you sell yourself, your image, right. your look, your clothes, your speech, your smell, everything matters. And people judge, absolutely judge by the way you, you are, right? I like your earrings, by the way. And thank you. But that's so true. When you go into a bookstore, um, you're going to pick up a book that looks cool right uh, well, or it has so an if, interesting title or what something. was this place you were saying what kind of place <laughs> a bookstore a book books bookstore. bookstore right but okay bookstores think about it the way they used to work you would go and browse right. and the only books you would pick up would be the books by authors you recognized or the cover was provocative in some way by its wording or its picture mm. to make you open it the cover the art or of the cover. another perfect example is Lady Gaga. Yesterday there was the Oscars, and to me, uh, you know, I remember when Lady Gaga first kind of launched herself to the entertainment world. Oh my God, she was the most provocative. She wore uh, a meat dress. Uh, person, uh, and that was her her kind of idea to coming right. out. Um, uh, uh, I don't. I'm not sure it was. 100% her personality, it was a show. It's absolute life is a show. Right. But she's now, you know, I guess 32 years old. She looked super old yesterday. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened with her makeup. Okay. But uh, no, but that's true. And she evolved and now she. And now she looked almost conservative. Uh, right. And so, but you know, life is a show. Absolutely. And, um, and people judge. Right. Absolutely they judge. They judge nonstop. So I hear you, honey. I hear you. So I let's, hear you, sister. let's do the show. Okay, so now we're going to, again, more Apple and Steve Jobs stuff. And this stuff gets repeated all the time because it's so damn good. So in 1984, uh, Apple was going to release their new Macintosh computer. And they hired an ad agency to come up with a way of announcing this to the world. And they got Ridley Scott, famous director, to create Super an ad. Cool. And everyone's probably seen this ad called the 1984 Super Bowl ad. And we're going to actually watch it now. And it may not play correctly, but we're going to try our best and see what uh, what happens. And the reason we're looking at this, he this was the worst rated ad with all the people they, they pulled ahead of time. Everyone said they hated the ad. Steve Jobs was told, don't run it. It will ruin your career. It will close Apple down. He was told by everyone around him, don't do it. 
the ad agency did their own surveys to find out how people liked the ad. And they were so afraid of the results to tell Steve Jobs, they never told him. And they didn't tell him because they knew one thing. He didn't care what they said. Right. He liked the ad. And he had that, that innate sense that was, this is what makes sense to me. And he did it. So we're going to try and see if I'm able to play this now. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. For those who are watching this there, we apologize. We don't have a way yet to show it there. But it's less than a minute, so we'll be very quick with this. And we'll be talking over it also. So here we go, maybe. And... There you are. Well, this is not the 1984 ad. It's someone's different version of it. So I don't know where the real one went. So we're going to stop this because something, something happened here. And I don't know where that came from. Anywho, good, good in talking to that. So we're going to, uh, man, I love, man, I love technology. What the heck was that? I don't know. Okay, well, the whole point of the 84 ad was it was so provocative and out of the box that people bought into it. Right. And the point of that ad applies to your career as realtors, 1,000%, which is follow your own path. The story of that ad is that most people go down the same path. And you and I have this joke about, yeah. and this is going to, for those who understand, they'll understand, we have a little inside joke. We're all on this path as realtors, right? And you come to a fork in the road. And most people will see a bunch of other realtors going down the right-hand fork. And every one of those agents, they've got a compass in their hand. And that's the joke. They've got a compass in their hand and they're, <laughs> they're looking for true north. Oh my God, where's true north, right? Right. And they go down that path. And they feel safe because every other realtor is going down that path. And yet to the left is the rocky path that says danger, cliffs ahead, do not go forward. That's the path you follow, right? That's the path you want to go down. And down that path, your vision needs to be there. What's at the end of that trail? Exactly. You're on an exploration. There's uh, the old saying, the journey is the reward, right? Mm -hmm. You need to go down the path to your reward. That's and true. And that reward That's is so your true. vision. And on that path, you know, your vision always changes. Your initial, um, as realtors, maybe your but first it vision. Right. Your but first, ultimately, you have one goal. Right. Well, your first vision, for example, might be you, um, you, want, you want to, to buy, make. You want to buy a house. Yeah, you, well, first of all, you want to make, a, let's say, $100,000. Then the next, you kind of build up to... Right, you have the, the visions of, I don't know if it's a financial goal. I think you need it. I think it could be financial, but I think it needs to be... More materialistic. More material. I think. You, materialistic you picture where you're going to be. much easier right. to accomplish, I think. The, the place where, you, where you're going to end up, right? Right. Money's okay. You could pick the big goal, but that's like this, I'm going to make, you know, a billion dollars. But I think it's, in my mind, it's more creative and more fun to picture where you're trying to get to. Yeah, but you can the, visualize it much easier. Right, but the most important thing for, for this process is there are spots along the trail where you stop temporarily mm -hmm. and then you realize you want to go further. So if you want to climb Everest, some people go to the base camp and that's an amazing goal. And some people want to climb Everest and go to the top. Exactly. And that's also an amazing goal. And the same thing with real estate. If you picture your, your goals, and the first goal, as I said, could be I want to you know, here in our market, I want to buy a house. I want to buy a condo in Redondo Beach. Maybe that's the first goal. And you achieve it. Oh, mm. look what I bought. Right. The new goal is recalibrated. Now you say, you know what? That's a condo or a townhome. Now I want to have a single family home. That's exactly. the new goal. And you pick the destination. I want that new townhome to be, it could be Redondo, it could be Hermosa, it could be Palos Verdes. But you pick it and you visualize it. And that's the next goal. And as you achieve these goals, maybe you broaden what you're hoping for. I picture my new home in Palos Verdes. Mm -hmm. on a bluff and maybe it's even kind of wacky you think and this is believe me this is not my goal i'm just making this up as i go here and you picture i want a fountain in front of the house i want it to have gates and i'm going to pull in in my brand new bentley maybe that's the goal that you visualize this is one of our clients goal oh yeah that's what <laughs> that's what it, so one of our clients told us that was their goal and you know what they achieved it they yes, made it happen and he true. told when we first met him years ago and his life wasn't where it is now he said that's my goal and he made it happen yeah so the power of Telling yourself where you want to go. You need to know your end game, absolutely. And I think ultimately, right. you know, if you know that, you can visualize it, you believe in it, and uh, you, you, you do everyday life towards that goal. Right. Much easier to live that way than just kind of go with the flow and right. hang out. <laughs> so again, the you problem know. that we have sometimes, and this is, this is the, the truthful part of this, I don't always have a good end game goal. 
I sometimes I'm in the moment in the day. Right. It's and hard. You, and you hammer yeah. me. You're like on me. Hey, what's your end game? It's like, well, shut up. I don't know. Yeah. And that's a problem for us sometimes because I know it hurts our business that I, as the partner in this company, am not focusing five, 10, 15 years down the road on where we need what to be. What is the ultimate goal here? Exactly. Right. So I have some ideas, but they're not focused. And I'm not saying that we should all be using a vision board, but vision boards, as stupid as they are, they work in some respects because every day you remind yourself. Exactly. The same way that you look in the mirror every day and make sure you look presentable, that memorizing where you want to go every day is super yes. important. So do it. If exactly. it's a note on your mirror, if it's a note to yourself, a phone call to yourself every morning. Hey me, how's that <laughs> how's that that vision board going? How's that path coming? How are you how are you aiming towards your goal? So in winding this call down, the only thing we want you guys to walk away with, and I use the word you guys, and I, I said I would never say that on one of our productions, so I apologize. But you guys, the only thing we want from you is to today think about where you want to go. Yeah. Think about that final place that you would call happy. That place where real estate will take you. How do you get there? How much do you need to sell? Do your best. If your goal is to be, have a strand property and, and a property in, in Lake Tahoe and, and maybe a property somewhere else, and today you're making $45,000 a year, I think you can maybe get there, but you need yeah. to figure it out. But what you're saying, I think, is 100% true. However, I do believe that just to keep it So that's it going, 90% true. Yeah, because just okay. to throw out goals like that, because the it's neighbor not has that. It's, it's you have you, to believe it. Yeah, you need to believe in it. You need to understand it. And I think you need to own it. Meaning that you truly believe, feel it, that I want this because of this and this and that. So I can almost so, guarantee you, in, the, in wrapping this up, everyone who is super successful, if you ask them about their goals, they will tell you they had very specific goals that they held to. Yeah, that's true. So that's the takeaway from today's call. Yeah. Please follow us on social media and uh, tune in next week at 10.30 a.m. every Monday. And visualize the two of us fighting over the weekend trying to figure out what our call is going to be about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for attending. Hello, bye. bye.